Sure. Uh, hello, my name is Joanne Lau. I'm the Secretary General of HKIAC. Uh, HKIAC is the host of this year's ICA Congress. It's the 26th uh, ICA Congress. Um, I'm also part of the uh, host committee, the ICA Congress host committee, uh, which is led by Justin D'Agostino um, and Neil Kaplan. Um, there are lots of highlights uh, for this year's uh, Congress. Uh, one of which is the number of participants that we have. Um, as of today, we have uh, over 1,400 participants coming from over 70 jurisdictions. So that is record breaking. Um, so we are very pleased to see um, such a diverse um, turnout and such a huge turnout from people from all around the globe. Um, the theme of the Congress is also very special. Um, the theme is uh, international arbitration, a human endeavor. So in a world where there are lots of discussions about technology um, and AI, uh, we're bringing the focus back to the human element in dispute resolution. So many fascinating topics for uh, discussion. Sure. Uh, for Hong Kong, uh, it has a very sophisticated legislative framework um, for arbitration. Um, but it's also great to see that Hong Kong is keeping up with developments in international arbitration um, along with the rest of the world. Um, so two significant developments in the past few years are related to uh, funding options for parties. Um, so in 2017, a third party funding uh, in arbitration um, has been allowed. So um, parties can now make use of uh, third party funders to fund their cases, um, which is a great tool for improving uh, access to justice. Um, the next legislation is related to outcome uh, fee, uh, outcome related fee structures in arbitration. So parties can now um, enter into arrangements with uh, lawyers on say conditional fees or damages uh, based agreements um, to again uh, help with financing of their arbitration. So both are very positive developments and well received by users. Hong Kong is in a unique position to act as a super connector between mainland China and the rest of the world. Um, one of the unique features is that for Hong Kong, it's part of China, it has very strong Chinese heritage, but at the same time, um, the people here, the businesses here, they have deep expertise in conducting uh, international um, business. And in Hong Kong, there's such a diverse group of uh, talent, talent uh, coming from mainland China, coming from the rest of the world. So they, Hong Kong and Hong Kong people and people in Hong Kong, um, they are really well placed in um, understanding the cultural nuances of cross border um, transactions um, and in bridging uh, the different cultures and the different businesses between mainland China and the rest of the world. Definitely. I think one of the best way to explain to people what Hong Kong is like is to get them to come to Hong Kong. Um, so the fact that we have people from over 70 jurisdictions coming to uh, Hong Kong um, for them to see what Hong Kong has to uh, offer. I think that's a fantastic opportunity for them to learn about the place. Um, and having a Congress of this size and um, such good uh, academic topics, it provides um, also a setting for exchange of ideas. Um, so all these conversations between um, people from this jurisdiction and the rest of the world, I'm sure it will facilitate even um, greater collaboration and um, deeper understanding going forward. Uh, come to Hong Kong. I think Hong Kong has uh, a lot to uh, offer. Um, for the Congress, we have lots of interesting intellectual stimulation, but come to Hong Kong also for its great food, its great culture, um, its great people. It's a very open, a welcoming place. Um, so I hope to see uh, many friends from around the world um, to, to visit. Looking forward to welcoming them all. As a Hong Kong Convention Ambassador, I'm really pleased that um, this year's ICA Congress, the most well-attended 
ICA Congress can take place in uh, Hong Kong um, and the fact that it can uh, bring uh, delegates from that many jurisdictions to Hong Kong, um, I think it's, it's very encouraging. And I think other um, businesses, other industries, if they're thinking of um, doing uh, similar congresses, conventions, uh, Hong Kong is the perfect place to do so. So Hong Kong has always been a very strong uh, hub for international dispute resolution. Uh, one, we have a very strong legislative framework for international arbitration um, and also very unique uh, and favorable arrangements uh, between Hong Kong and mainland China um, on both uh, uh, seeking of interim measures and on enforcement of uh, awards. Um, two, the talent pool here is very vibrant, very diverse. There are a lot of professionals who are bilingual um, and the ability to handle cases in both English and Chinese is a major asset uh, here. Um, the courts um, are very uh, supportive of arbitration as well. They are very familiar and experienced with uh, dealing in um, arbitration related uh, applications. Um, so the whole institutional uh, uh, framework is very strong and there is also very uh, strong support from uh, the government um, through the Department of Justice as well um, in uh, promoting uh, international arbitration and Hong Kong's uh, role as a major dispute resolution hub.